are super soft cinnamon rolls. And the technique that I'm using to make the dough is an Asian milk bread technique, sometimes referred to as Japanese milk bread. Um, as far as I can tell in my research, the starter technique started in China. So it's, I believe, a Chinese word. I don't know, maybe one of you know how to say it, what kind of a word it is, but it's Tengzong or Tiangzong. So depending on the pronunciation, that's basically what it is. So I will butcher it this whole time. And basically what the Tiangzong is, is a starter for your dough. And it's a gelatinous starter. And so it's flour and milk and water. Sometimes it's just milk. In this recipe, we have milk in the rest of the dough, so we kind of mixed the milk and the water in the starter just to make it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to start that. If you have looked at the recipe, you'll see that it's just a proportion or a small percentage of the flour and liquid that typically go in bread dough. And we've taken that out and we're going to mix it and cook it. You guys are looking at me as if there's, oh, there's We'll get to it. You finish that. But tell me. Fresh milk in place of dry milk. That's later oh. on. Okay, so no, that's, for this it needs to be fresh milk. And for the liquid that we're going to mix into the dough, fresh milk. The dry milk is a dough enhancer. And the dry milk, yes, you could leave it out. But it needs to be a mix of dry milk and the fresh milk for this recipe. Um, it just works with the chemistry. So yes, there are other Tianzong or milk bread recipes without dry milk. Totally fine, go for it. This one has both. So, if you wanna come over, let's just start, oh, I didn't heat my pan, but let's just start cooking this. And so I'm going to add in my, Alexa. that's Alexa going off. This is five tablespoons of milk, five tablespoons of water. Now, if you guys have a question, I get this all the time. I call for whole milk. Can I use 1%? Can I use 2%? Yes, whole milk is how I created the recipe. Um, and so it's, that's the chemistry of it. it, just has a little more fat. This actually today, because the shelves are kind of um, quarantine empty, this is 1% uh, milk and it's fine. But if you've got it, whole milk is great. If you've got cream or half and half, you can mix it with your skim milk to make a little thicker milk for it. No big deal. Um, so that alarm. I'm sorry, what is dry milk? Same as powdered milk? Yes, good question. So we'll get to it in a minute and I'll talk to you about the difference between the dry non-fat milk and the powdered milk. So. I promise I will get to that. Um, do you want to check that dough? It stays indented. Let's take it out of the warm oven then, and we'll leave it at room temperature. So I have a demo, a, a swap in, rising the oven. That's what we were taking out. All right, this milk, water, and flour is our starter. I want to tell you a little bit about the chemistry really quick while we're doing this. Also, this whisk is one of my favorites. You could absolutely use a whisk like this. Um, I love this because it gets into the corners of my pan. It's called a U-shaped whisk. Um, I have a link on the post um, on my blog, just for, you can get it on Amazon or at kitchen supply stores or Ikea. I think Ikea even has these. That's right. Yeah, I love them. Do uh, you have another one? Can nut milk be used in place of dairy milk? Um, I have not tried it. Some, I don't know, I, I have not tried it. I'll just leave it at that. I don't know that it would create the same texture and I'm not sure it would do the same thing here. But you could certainly try it. Oh, it is, okay. Um, this is going to create a gel. Ooh, it's already getting thick. I can feel it, and it kind of turns out looking like paste, almost like a loose Play-Doh once we're done. And what it's doing, the flour molecules are absorbing that liquid and creating this sort of gel. 
And so when we mix this into the dough, this will create a more moist dough because those flour molecules don't have to suck in all of the other liquid we're adding. Ooh, look how beautiful that is. So it's about like a nice thick paste. I'm gonna stop the cooking and set this aside. Oh, that looks great. So you can see the thickness. Can you set it aside in the pan or does it need to be removed from the heat? I'm going to remove it from the heat. Okay. I could set it on the back of my stove. I'm going to bring it over to my workspace. Okay. So we can move over there. And it doesn't need to be super cool when we use it, but I'm just going to let it be here. Um, it, you don't even need to transfer it to a bowl. I'm all about <laughs> less dishes. All right. I'm just going to keep talking unless you guys interrupt me, but I'm going to make the dough part of the cinnamon rolls now. Nut flour instead of uh, regular flour. No, you cannot. I know, I'm so sorry. Um, also, I tried these with my favorite gluten-free flour, which is cup for cup, and it did not work well. So this is not necessarily a straightforward swap for uh, gluten-free or nut flours or you know GF flours. It just isn't. So maybe down the road I will figure out how to do a ting or milk bread method with gluten-free, but right now it's not a straight swap. Um, I do have a quick cinnamon roll recipe that's more kind of biscuity, and you don't, it doesn't have yeast in it, and you can make that gluten-free. It's on my website as well. I want to talk to you about measuring the flour. So yes, this recipe is a bit forgiving, but you don't wanna do extra flour. So you don't wanna have your bag of flour or your bin of flour that has been sitting for a while and settled and just kind of scoop in and tap it down. That cup of flour is going to weigh a lot more than the type of cup I'm gonna show you in a second. This is gonna have probably one to two tablespoons more flour than a sifted cup of flour or something lighter. So this is why I put the measure, the weight of the flour in. If you've got a kitchen scale, um, use the weight the first time just to get a feel for how light that flour is. If you don't have a scale, I'm going to show you my little trick. It's not perfect, but what I do is I just scoop my flour. This is my fake sifting. And I just really lighten that flour up, lightly scoop it. I don't tap down. I lightly scrape. And that is one cup of flour. So probably a little more than, if I do this for four cups and two tablespoons, a little more than 496 grams, but it is better than nothing. So on the doughs that I've prepped and made today, I have weighed it. But I just wanted to show you that little technique. Any questions? And you do that before each cup, yes, the shaking? Yes, because your bowl, bin, bag of flour has settled, so that whole thing, you either sift it or do this. Sifting obviously is probably the best, but I just lighten up each cup of flour, no tapping down. See, I'm gonna just show you. If I tapped this down, you can see, that's like two tablespoons right there. Can you see that line of how settled it is in the? Yeah. So, okay, and then, I don't wanna lose count. This is two tablespoons. And the, the measurement is a little off because baking is done by weight. And so that's why it's that weird two tablespoons thing. But um, if you're weighing your ingredients, then you don't have to worry about tablespoons. All right, that was my little trick for flour. So I have four cups and two tablespoons of flour in my bowl. I can actually just put it right in my mixing bowl. And my warm milk, it's a little, it's, it's nice and warm, it's not boiling or anything. My melted butter, I'm just gonna mix those. And I have two eggs. And these eggs are room temperature. So this is kind of a big deal 
If your eggs are cold, put them in a bowl of warm or hot water. Let them sit there for about five minutes. Um, because if the eggs are cold, it will make the butter cold, it will make the milk cold, or cold, and the whole dough is going to be cold just because your eggs were, and it will take longer to rise. You've just gone to all that trouble to get your milk warm and your butter warm. Make sure your eggs are warm. So I like, you don't have to do this, I like to beat my eggs up a little bit just because the dough hook doesn't do the best job of that. You don't even have to do it a lot. All right, my warm milk, my butter, goes in with my flour, easy. My eggs go in, all the liquid. My yeast, it's about one tablespoon of yeast, sure. goes in. This is instant yeast, so let's talk about that for a second. Notice I didn't put my yeast in warm water or warm milk and let it sit for a few minutes and get foamy like a lot of bread recipes ask you to do. This is instant dry yeast and you can put it in a dry mix and mix it in with your flour. I don't have to prove it first. Um, if you are using active dry yeast, you need to start that and prove it and make it foamy in your warm milk first. But I like this method. That's just the difference there. I think I talk about it on my blog post. The other ingredient that I want to talk about is this non-fat dry milk. Some people will have that granular dry milk. That is going to be less. Do I write that in there? Let's see. So this is, I'm going to write it in my blog post, but this is about half the amount that's in the recipe because this isn't the granular kind. This is that powder. So if you've got powder, it's going to be less. If you have the granular kind, it's a quarter of a cup. Goes right in. It's not going to kill your recipe if you accidentally you swap it and it's the different milk. Don't worry too much about it. Okay, that is awesome. Guess what I'm going to add now? I'm going to add that starter. This is my gel starter. And look, it's all pasty and delicious. It goes right in. And it's nice and warm, so it will keep my dough warm. If you can see in there, I'm just scraping it all out. Every bit of that gel goes in. Julie Newton said, never thought about that for eggs. Great tip. Dallin says, does anyone want to make these for me? I live in New York. <laughs> Perfect. I'm sure you'll get volunteers. Okay, I think you could, I'm gonna pull this over a little bit. If you don't have a stand mixer, no problem, do this by hand. The beauty of this dough is you don't have to mix it very much. So this first step, it just gets mixed a little bit. You could come over and we could watch it, right, if you want to oh. come closer. <coughs> All right, so thanks. So it is going to look dry in this stage. This is a fun stage. So we mix all the ingredients together. Everything comes together in a very rough dough. Oops, I make messes. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. Jane Morris says hi, miss you. Hey, hey. All right, this is where I let the machine do the work. If you were doing this by hand, you could do it on the cupboard. See how all of that dry ingredient got mixed in? I didn't have to do the work. And I'm just waiting for it to look a little sticky. Starting to pull away from the sides at the bottom. And this is a kind of a fun step. We are just going to sort of gather it together. You don't have to even do this. We're going to gather it together off of the dough hook and let it sit in here for 20 minutes. But I want you to see this rough texture. Um, this will sit for 20 minutes. Then you're going to knead it again for about a minute. And it will be the most soft, smooth dough you've ever seen. So I'm going to cover this with a towel just to keep the warmth in and let that rough mixture Sit. Look on my, on my blog post and I show you what it looks like 
after it sat for 20 minutes and after I need it for a minute. So that is awesome. Um, no need to knead it for like 10 minutes or get a lot of that going because the gluten forms as it sits and rises and sits and rises. One quick question, Stephanie Merkel says, when you have a recipe that calls for sifted flour, do you measure the flour out and then sift, or do you sift and then measure? She must have just joined us. Oh, good. Yes, I go over that a little earlier. I, um, if it calls for sifted flour, you sift and then measure. If um, it doesn't, you fluff it, like I showed you just a few minutes ago, so you can go back and, and watch. Um, I just like to make sure my flour isn't compacted or has sat for a while, so that little fluffing method is Perfect. I am going to show you a little trick. So pretend this has sat for 20 minutes, okay? We're just going to pretend for a second. And I just kneaded it um, for a minute. And so this is my nice smooth dough. To save me from putting it into a grease bowl and letting it rise for about an hour, I just spray or butter the sides of the pan and scrape that dough over and spray it again. There's my grease bowl. So that's my little tip. And I don't have to transfer it to a brand new bowl and dirty all of these bowls. And then that gets um, put in a nice warm place to rise for an hour to an hour and a half. So, yeah. Thanks. That's my little tip. But remember, that still needs 20 minutes and then a mix and we're good. So I have a lovely swap out. Thank you. Oh, so nice to have assistance. Um, this has been rising for probably 70 to 80 minutes, which is not the full hour and a half because I put it in a nice warm place. I heated my oven for just a minute, turned it off, and put this little mm. bowl right mm. in. So I'm going to show you, see how puffy it is? That, that dough that I just showed you in the mixing bowl was down in the bottom. This is how puffy and beautiful it gets. And you can tell because it's pretty much double in size. And when you stick your finger in, the print stays instead of bouncing back. So you can just test it that way. This is ready to be formed. Who's ready to make cinnamon rolls in all their glory? Did I? I did that. I did that. <gasps> you guys, I forgot the salt in that dough right there. It's a teaspoon and a half. Is that right? Mm -hmm. A teaspoon and three quarters of salt that goes in that dough. We'll have to mix it in later. <laughs> I was wondering why that was standing there. Yes, yeah, so I always use that real salt because we're in Utah and it's delicious and healthy. And how many quarts is that mixing bowl? Oh, this one is a five. I think it's a five or a five and a half. I lied to you. This one is a five and this one is a four and a half. We've got two machines going. So it fits in either one. If you've got one of those giant KitchenAids, it's like in the very bottom because those bowls are so big, those six quart ones. Um, but yeah, it fits in either one. So, all right, any other questions? I'm gonna start forming this. I have my little bench flour right here. You can do it on your clean countertop. You can do it on a big cutting board. You can do it on a big piece of parchment paper, whatever you wanna do. Look how beautiful this dough is. I'm just going to scrape it out. Ta-da! And so this gets formed into a 12 by 19 inch rectangle. You don't have to be perfect. I do have a ruler in my kitchen, so I use that. But I'm going to show you how lovely and soft this dough is. I don't want to squish all the air bubbles out. I'm going to roll it a little bit. But I'm just giving it a little help, stretching it into a rectangle shape so I don't have to overwork it. And then I will use my rolling pin. 
you can pat it out almost to its entire shape and just gently go under the dough, pull it out. It's such a nice soft dough and it doesn't stick very much because of all of that butter and enrichment in the dough. So I don't even need flour on my rolling pin to get this to its correct shape. So just get to that nine, 19 by 12 inches. And this is where it gets messy, but also delicious. That's my 12. That needs to be longer. Just going to gently help this along. Come under it a little. There's a quick question. Yeah. Um, is there a substitute for yeast because of a yeast shortage? Oh, good question. I have not tried this with a sourdough starter. It would certainly take longer to proof and to rise if you use the sourdough starter, and I'm not sure what it would do to the chemistry. So, unfortunately, no at this point because I haven't played around with other options. Um, give a friend in the neighborhood that would give you <laughs> some yeast. That's true. If you don't have any stored in the back of your fridge, I'm afraid. Um, I'm not sure of a good substitute. Okay, this was a little bit bigger than 19 inches. And as I roll this up, it kind of tends to lengthen. So I just, prop, I just pulled it in a little bit. Like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. And it's all ready. I haven't smushed the dough too much. It's still kind of soft. It's about a little less than a quarter inch thick. And so now we get to fill it. So I use four tablespoons of butter, and this is room temperature butter. If, it's, if you need to melt it a little, fine. Um, it won't be terrible, but I like this. It just helps the brown sugar stick. It creates that sort of gooey center. Just wanna check, so that dough is 20 minutes, right? And then we're gonna mix it. Mm -hmm because I just made that one. With the salt. You're gonna yeah, we're gonna mix the in the salt. So, all right, this butter is so perfectly soft. Usually I use my fingers. That's Alexa talking to us. Anyone use Alexa or Google? I kind of love her for timers. You can probably also use a brush for this. But this is great to kind of get everywhere and get a nice, even layer. Delicious. All right, one of the other things is this is going to be the center of your cinnamon rolls right here next to you. So you wanna make sure that all the yummy brown sugar and cinnamon gets right in the middle, because you know that middle bite, it's so good. And then on the edges, you wanna make sure the brown sugar's over on those edges, because those are the and cinnamon rolls, you don't want them left out. So that's where your brown sugar and cinnamon comes in. And I use a cup and I like dark brown sugar, but guess what? We're out and the stores don't really have it. So we're using our storage of light brown sugar and it's going to be just as delicious. But the dark brown sugar just adds that more caramely dark flavor. So feel free to use whatever you like or have. Um, some people mix, maybe you guys do, some people mix white sugar and brown sugar in the center of their cinnamon rolls. Does anyone do that? Um, I don't do it. I want mine to be more gooey. And that makes it sweet and delicious, but it doesn't help with the gooeyness really. All right, fingers getting messy. I'm getting it right over to the edges there. The edge closest to you doesn't need to be completely covered because I'll show you in a second, I'm gonna pinch it together. So, 
Brandon Martin said he set his timer for 20 minutes. We'll see how it goes. Awesome, Brandon. I love that you're making them right now. Oh, you're going to love them so much. Lindsay Gonzalez says, we love Alexa. Oh, me too. Me too. Okay, cinnamon. I use two tablespoons of cinnamon. It's a little more than some recipes, but I, I it's not overpowering. It's not like that Cinnabon, like, oh my gosh, too much cinnamon. Um, it's kind of just the right amount for this lovely dough. Um, sprinkle it evenly. I made cinnamon rolls the other day. I forgot the cinnamon. It was kind of like I forgot the salt just now in that dough. Um, is, what was that question? Is there a reason to use softened butter versus melted butter? Um, yes and no. It's not going to hurt it. So softened butter has the air still in it and it's not separated. And so it's just, I don't know, it just kind of will, be a little bit more air in between there, but melted butter is totally fine because um, your brown sugar will just absorb it before you roll it up, so it's fine. All right, I'm gonna roll this up and I'm gently just gonna use like the side of my hand to start that first roll. And this whole time, I would just gently handle the dough. You don't wanna be stretching it and pulling it. Um, that may create holes, it may stretch it to a thin, you want just the right amount of dough in between the layers. So just this is just a gentle little roll. It doesn't need to be tight, but it shouldn't be loose either. Cindy Taylor said, have you ever added crushed pecans? Would that be okay? That would be delicious. Delicious, do it. Sue Arnetta said, I feel like I'm back at LHJ looks delish, T. And I loved when you'd visit the test kitchen, Sue. I wish I could feed these to you after they were done. Okay, I just brought that edge up and just gently pinched it together. That holds the spiral together so you don't have it popping open. And I'm going to roll my roll onto that seam. It will just hold it together. Now, I keep realizing that as I'm rolling, it gets so much bigger than 19 inches wide. This is like 22 inches. So just gently lift that together. And you don't want skinny cinnamon rolls, so we're just going to puff that together just a little bit. Again, you don't have to. It will be totally fine if you don't. These measurements are just helpful guides so that we have the same uh, size of 15 cinnamon rolls. And like I say in the blog post, you can make them thicker. You can roll this smaller and have more dough in between and make really like puffy giant ones. You decide. You could roll it from the short end and have really big ones. It's, it's a whatever you want. Okay, so this is about 19 inches and I'm gonna divide it into 15 rolls because um, my jelly roll pan fits perfectly, 15 rolls. But if you want to do it in two little square rolls, you or pans, you decide. You decide how big these are. But we'll do this into thirds. You can eyeball or measure. And then in between those thirds, each one gets five. Again, you can eyeball this or measure it. And, ta-da, okay, approximately 15 rolls that are all the same size. You can use a knife to cut these, or you can do what I'm doing and use thread or unflavored floss. And I'm gonna show you my favorite trick. I used to watch mom do this when I was little. I loved this. I do um, either double or triple thickness. And I just have my thread. This is my little knife. So I just gently lift that up, crisscross my string, and have a cinnamon roll. Before I do that, I'm going to spray my pan. You can butter this pan or spray it. 
put it here. I think you guys can see that. My mother oh. used to sprinkle it with more brown oh, sugar. You can do that. Totally. Um, you can add more brown sugar to the bottom. You can add those chopped pecans and more brown sugar and butter. Whatever you like. So these are yours to be creative with because I already just showed you how to make that delicious milk bread dough. And again, I'm just gently handling this dough. My dad used to like raisins in them and we would plead with mother not to put the raisins in. <laughs> Anyone like raisins in their cinnamon rolls? We didn't. Okay, five. <laughs> Diane says she's dying right now. I want them. Oh, this is so hard not to be able to just have everyone here. But this is fun. Okay, my lines are very um, <laughs> loose guides right now. I'm a little off on my lines, but that's okay. And I will say, I just baked a batch. This kitchen smells amazing. The vote is no raisins. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> All Gross, the way right? across. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. But nuts? Yes, please. Um, what else does, do people put in their cinnamon rolls? Coconut. Oh, yeah. I made coconut caramel cinnamon rolls. Nope, wasn't even cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Coconut caramel rolls with this dough the other day. Oh, you guys, so good. Hey, look at my little nub. I like to put this end roll facing down so that it doesn't look as crazy in my pan. There are my rolls. You can gently just space them a little bit. There's a bit of room between each one. Uh, these are going to puff up as they rise for the next 45 minutes-ish. So what I'm going to do is cover this lightly with plastic wrap. You can use a towel too. We just don't want it to get crusty and dry out. Well, well we did get some raisins. Some oh. bites. Okay. <laughs> okay, you do you. Sue you put some raisins in. <laughs> Sue wonders if she could get a computer that had a smell of vision. <laughs> when you get one, let me know, Sue. I want it too. Um, Kim Keeler, coconut caramel tips on that, please. Okay, I will work on the recipe and I will send it along. I think I've made it two or three times now and I'm trying to get just the right amount of coconut and try, trying to get the inside a little caramely. But usually the dough absorbs all that caramel inside, so it's to come. Um, let's see, I was telling you, okay, so this is going, depending on the warmth of your kitchen, all of my rising times or proofing times have ranges. So just watch it. And I showed you that little finger test. On these, you can just do a little finger test and you'll see they fill up the pan. But you don't want to overproof them. So just when they look about, I don't know, a third, maybe a half, in, like 50% bigger, uh, they're ready to go in the oven at 350. So I don't know, if you overproof them, they just get a little, a different texture. So just watch them and see how warm your room is. Um, but I'm gonna set these aside. We're going to wipe the counter off and then let's eat, let's frost and eat. Um, I did wanna tell you guys about the dough. A lot of cinnamon roll recipes have sugar in the dough. And these do not because Sugar is hydroscopic. Does some scientist want to tell me if I'm uh, explaining that right? Hydro, hydroscopic, I believe. So that means that it absorbs liquid. It sucks in all the liquid. So if sugar was in our dough, it would pull in some of that liquid that we've added and sort of dry out that dough. And it's a little bit negligible, but if you ate it side by side, you could tell that there was a slightly different texture to a dough with sugar in it. Um, it's just a little 
drier, not as soft and silky. Um, okay, let's see. This is still warm out of the oven, and my frosting, I've had a lot of questions if you can use a cream cheese frosting or what frosting to use. Some people like glaze. Do a glaze. I use a fluffy vanilla frosting that's powdered sugar or confectioner sugar, butter, and vanilla, and a pinch of salt if you're using unsalted butter. Um, I like it. It's just I like the texture better than a glaze. Cream cheese frosting? Yes! Use cream cheese frosting. I have one on my blog. It's called Simple Cream Cheese Frosting. It's delicious. Use your favorite recipe, whatever you want. Just, I don't know, don't use canned frosting. <laughs> I don't like canned frosting. Some people love it. Um, I guess if you've got that in your food storage and it's confectioner sugars out at the store, use canned frosting. But I love this fluffy icing. It's just slightly thick and when you put it on the rolls warm, it sort of will melt into all those crevices and then you can add more if you want. I'm using my favorite tool. It's a little offset spatula. You can use the back of a spoon, you can use a butter knife, whatever you want. Oh, you know what? I was going to tell you guys. So whenever these are made and I'm here, at my family's house. My dad says, wait, don't frost them all. He loves to put butter on a warm cinnamon roll and just eat it with butter. Try it, it's kind of nice. But my brothers and I love a lot of frosting. So we even add more than is typical. That's a double batch. Um, this bowl of frosting, thanks mom, is a double batch to what's in the recipe. So this is um, my fluffy vanilla frosting recipe on the blog. And we just made a whole batch, but in my recipe it's half of this. So you might have a little bit extra for those people who want to spoon on their own. Um, or make it, you can freeze this frosting. You can make it, freeze it, have it ready for the next batch. These look really good. Okay, I'm gonna show you the silky insides, you guys. And no one else is around, ladies, so we get to eat all of these. <laughs> They're still slightly warm, which is amazing. The nice thing with this milk bread dough is it stays soft the next day because it doesn't have sugar in the dough. And because of that gel that we put in, that, that lovely paste, um, it will stay soft. It doesn't get as stale quickly. Look at pull that. one apart. Okay, one I'm gonna pull one apart. All right, so this is soft. Oh my gosh, they're just springy and silky and soft. Is that in a good place to show these guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna pull this apart. It's just soft and light and fluffy. And look at that gooey inside. You guys, I wish you could come over and taste it. Mm. It's so good. Okay, let's see, I know Brandon's cooking it. You are gonna be able to eat these in, what, like an hour and a half, two hours? Who else is making them? Any more questions? So I love, it's just enough gooeyness for me. It's not overpowering with the like gooey cinnamon brown sugar inside, but it sort of is beautiful and gooey. Look at that. It's all shiny and delicious. It's just, for me, it's the perfect amount. <laughs>